Hi everyone, my name is Yu Zilo. I'm a grad student from the University of Michigan. Today I'm very happy to talk about uh, enabling useful problems in screen language with a human in the loop. So screen languages such as Python have started to play a very important role in modern day-to-day -day data engineering and processing tasks because of the many advantages they have. For example, they are mostly high-level program languages. Users don't have to worry about memory management and there are a vast number of available libraries for everyone to use, including Pandas, NumPy, and PyTorch. And these languages are portable. Scripts written in them uh, can be run on different platforms. These features make these scripting languages easy to read, write, and learn in general. Yet still, it's not rare to write a script that goes wrong. Here's an example program. So it is trying to initialize lists with a value one appended to the input, and running the init function twice, as here, someone would expect to see output like this. But in reality, what you see is, is something like this, where the one is accumulating in the end of the list you're building. And this is due to the uh, incorrect usage of the default parameter and the uh, list. The correct way to write this is also shown on the right. Also, data can go wrong. Real world data is not always perfect. There might be typos like in the red box, but there may be missing values. And a script that works totally fine on perfect data might just fail on dirty data. What makes it worse is that these kind of errors can co-appear. And data engineering tasks are mainly tested by looking at output data quality. That means even if you have an up and running program, you still might need to refine it if it does not give you desired outputs. These characteristics make, a write, make writing a correct script at the first attempt very hard. And the developing process usually requires multiple rounds of trial and error. In this development cycle, the good news is provenance can be very helpful. So what is provenance? At a high level, it is a derivation history of data from its input sources. And it is supposed to provide explanations for what has happened to the output. Let's understand this better by envisioning what ideal problems can achieve. So first of all, ideal problems should be able to answer a range of questions. For example, for the incorrect code snippet, one might ask which operations in the script led to the list with two ones. It is obvious here, but might not be obvious, obvious if the program gets lengthy. Also, the ideal problem should be able to answer questions related to data, such as, which input file led to an output. These are not the only questions one might have. Developers might ask all kinds of questions based on the output they're seeing. Beyond then just giving high level answers, ideal problems should be also able to answer questions at different levels of detail. For example, for this snippet again, my one might ask more detailed question like which parameter in the operation init actually led to the second one in the output. Or someone might ask another data question, which is which column in the input data file Z led to the output. In general, this ability is very crucial when the user is trying to narrow down which part of data is actually problematic. Or maybe the user is certain that he's using a correct operator, but just not sure which part or which parameter triggered a bug. Another aspect of provenance is that it comes with costs. It requires to record certain information at runtime so that it can provide information afterwards, and this introduces overhead. So another uh, aspect of ideal provenance is it should have as low overhead as possible. With this idea in mind, now let's look at how current solution works. Current solutions mainly fall into two categories. The first is automatic but fixed. These kind of works um, do not require instrumentations to be added to the scripts, but they are only able to provide a limited range of, of output with a fixed uh, level. The second category of work is flexible, but requires a user to write manual annotation in the scripts. So actually none of these achieve the ideal problems just described, and we hereby propose our solution, and we believe it's one step towards uh, the ideal problems. Our solution mainly consists of three steps, which are trace, specify, and then generate. Now let's look at them uh, one by one. 
the first step is to take an unmodified Python script and automatically transform it. So basically, it wraps every operator and UDF in the script so that uh, when it's actually executed, the tracing component gain extra chances to do pre-processing and post-processing for each operator. For example, code here on the left will be automatically wrapped into the code on the right. The second step is to allow humans to specify their detailed problem need, problems need for their own case. Because remember, everyone might have a different question to ask. And the specification generally, serve, generally serves two roles. It can be filters that determine what values include in the provenance. It is somewhat similar to a collection predicate in databases. So examples include which values upstream or downstream dependencies to include, or if there is any operators particularly interesting. A specification can also be constrained regulating the provenance outputs. The most important one would be at which unit should the provenance be at. So in order to answer the provenance question we have seen before, one would specify the tracing target as the second one in the output and the operator of interest is, is in it and the unit should be parameter. And once we have these trace and the specification from user, we can actually generate the provenance using this information. And note that for a script, this is the only traces once, but it can allow users to specify multiple application specifications and then generate the provenance on need basis. And in order to generate high quality provenance, we need to associate semantics of operators because operators in screen languages can be black boxes. They can be even written in other program languages. So there is no fine grained dependency uh, for the interpreter to, to infer between the outputs and inputs. And therefore the interpreter cannot answer questions at different units. For example, for the append function, uh, the interpreter doesn't know anything other than that the output as a whole depends on the input as a whole. So therefore we propose to use an external globally shared centralized knowledge base to capture the semantics of software libraries. So for each operator of interest, this knowledge base contains short programs to, that establish the relation between the inputs and outputs at different units. And the bad news is the KB has to be manually written, but only once, and it can be used everywhere. For more detail for this knowledge base, please refer to the paper. And we also show some pre preliminary experiment results for the runtime overhead analysis. We use a TPCDI uh, data generator to generate three data tables of different sizes. And we applied five operators re representing the most common data engineering workload following uh, uh, the procedure in another paper. And here we run the unmodified script first and then the instru instrumented version on each data set. And we capture the runtime in seconds. We could see that um, the execution time for both versions scales roughly linearly with the size of the data set. And we could also see that the additional overhead for uh, tracing the provenance is marginal in most cases, except uh, for the space transformation. And this is because the current implementation will save a copy of the entire data, even if only part of it is changed. To summarize, uh, we pro propose a system that only require one-time automatic execution trace for script, but allow people to uh, obtain flexible provenance through specifications. It still relies on manually published knowledge base, but by sharing it across all the users, we hope this can reduce the effort for the individual users. And that's it, thanks for listening. Thank, thank you. Really cool to see that. I really like the slide that you have where you show the like different uh, different steps, and there is a mix of human and machines and really working together to to solve this this tricky problem of provenance. So so really cool. Um, you showed this initial example uh, where the default argument is 
uh, being modified, and then um, that leads to to an error. Um, I'm still unsure. Can you maybe explain a little bit why, how you would present to a user what the problem was and how they would know what the error was? Because here, the the second one is the one in the temp dot append one, but from the second loop or from the first loop, right? So knowing that the first one is from the second loop and the second one is from the first loop is the problem is what is what you need to know. But how do you, in the end, represent that solution to a user? Yeah, so one way is that, so in the correct case, uh, you, so if you use our system, our system what values if influence the output, then for the credit case for each output, you might see uh, the empty list in, in lead to the result, right? But in the wrong case for the second list, you might see it's upstream provenance, including the including the list with element one inside it. So now you see you are not initializing from the empty list. Does that make sense? Okay. Hey, uh, thank you for the great talk. Um, I have a question about the, the space of operators that you cover, right? Because you mentioned you created this um, knowledge base of, of operators and here you mentioned like five uh, different operators that you covered in the experiment. So my question is divided into two. So out of these five operators, are these uh, predefined. So uh, if like two different users can implement two different operators differently, so are they um, um, predefined? And, and the second question is, what is the scope? So you mentioned one uh, creation of knowledge base, will it cover all possible operations in the world or? Yeah, I got, I got your question. So the first question is, if the operators are predefined, the answer is yes. So the uh, the space of operators we are currently looking at include operators like from pandas. So those are predefined. And the second question is the space of operators. So currently uh, uh, the author have manually uh, writ written the short programs in knowledge base for a portion of pandas and NumPy functions. But in the future, we think uh, we would uh, be happy to see a community of effort building up knowledge base together. Thank you, thank you. And uh, introduction, right? We need to return. Uh, so uh, Roe from North Eastern University. Yeah, thank you for your question. Um, I don't know how to. Hello. <clears throat> Hi, Yuji. Um, oh, are you guys moving on? No, no, go ahead. Um, okay, I was, I was wondering how does this compare with uh, the body of work and sort of software debugging and um, it, sort of trying to explain errors that occur in, in sort of straight up standard software. Um, I guess I'm trying to understand um, how would this give us a level up? How would provenance give us a level up over sort of um, standard execution tracing and you know debugging models that already exist uh, in a lot of the software literature, maybe not database systems literature. Yeah, that's a good question. So from my experience of uh, using software debugging tools, my experience is that uh, they will give you hints and traces regarding the errors you written in the code, but they don't necessarily give you the the data side of the the issue for example um, if you your program runs perfectly fine meaning it can execute uh, exit without errors then those software debugging tools don't necessarily give you like which input files or which input data or things like that that contributes to your output does it make, make sense um, so my question, sorry, sorry to follow up on that, is then why focus then on scripting languages in general? Because the motivating example that you give is 
is very much data independent, right? Here it's a simple array that we're initializing um, and appending one to. So, um, it, yeah. So I I purposely put more uh, time on the demonstrating the code errors, but we also support uh, for data errors. But we don't have a concrete example in here, mainly due to the time can constraint. Thank you. No problem. Hey, I was just wondering, sometimes when there's workflows that are entirely in SQL, I mean, admittedly, I'm biased that way, but do you, can you see this kind of system being used to find errors in, in sequential processing in, in SQL? Like you make a sequence of tables, materialize them, and then there's some kind of error that comes along if, that you would need the provenance. I mean, you could, um, sorry, I didn't hear your question clearly. Are you asking what's the difference between my work and the provenance in database? Uh, not specifically. I was just wondering if this approach could be used with you. You were demonstrating with Python. You know, can you use it with a with SQL, especially as a declarative language? So for SQL, for in databases, uh, because in databases you have a quite fixed set set of operators and you execute everything within the environment of database. So you could, you have more control of what's going on. So uh, in that world of technology, they have uh, different solutions to the same question. For example, they can, uh, and they can instrument the SQL query or they can instrument the database original. Then they could gain additional uh, information to identify like why, where, and how provenance. But in screaming language, many things are out of your hand. Meaning, for example, if you run a program written in C in the Python, then all you do is you feed your input to that black box and you get the output back. So you don't have control over that. So that's a very big difference. Uh, I meant just within SQL itself, not just with. Okay. 